Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the J22 Sports and Entertainment Report. I am your host, Johnny District. You all know that drill. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you already have it. And I just want to do part two of the Nationals Draft Parade. I didn't have time to get into part all the picks. And so I just want to do another one. Uh, this this one is probably much more positive uh, because I think they, they did a better job with these picks than the last one. The last one, I'm, I think I don't give them high marks. You can go back to my last video. But yeah, let me go into it. Uh, I'll share my screen real quick. And let's go. I did our revenue compensation pick, and I did our uh, other one. I'm also going to talk a little bit just about the core and maybe a little on my own. But the second round pick, let me just make sure I go, is Luke Dickerson. And this pick, I give an A+. Plus. Uh, last pick, I gave both. Uh, first round, I gave an F. Second round, definitely a D. I, I think we could have done better. I gave Y, so you can go back to my last video uh, if you want to know. But this one, first of all, uh, when I'm looking at perfectgame.org, I don't know much about a player profile, and stuff like he's athletic and everything, that's fine. Uh, that's always good. But athleticism isn't a panacea. There's a lot. There's the whole package you got to look at. And as I went in my last video, Babe Ruth wasn't an athlete per se. He had a he had a belly, hot dogs and beer. So, and if you ask me, Shohei Otani's not an athlete. So, you don't have to be athletic, be an athlete, quote unquote. Well, they're all athletes, but you know what I mean, to be a very good player. Anyway, but what stood out to me was this one: very good student. And I, this might have mean reading and arithmetic. I. So we don't know if it'll translate, but then I looked at the stat line and I highlighted what stands out, zero strikeouts. Didn't strike out all year. He tied the home run record with Mike Trout. And generally speaking, he's in northern New Jersey and Trout's in southern. It's much colder in the northern part where he is. So home runs don't come till later. So not only did he tie with Trout, but he was in much colder uh, elements. So that's why you'll see a lot of cold weather teams not as hit hit as much home runs. And so I think this guy, he's very smart. He's an athlete. Some people say he's, he could be like another Gunnar Henderson. Now, if that's true, I, there's no guarantees. I, I hope he is, but I don't. Gunnar Henderson's one of the best, and if not one of, he's the best shortstop in baseball. So uh, that's some, I, I won't annoy it that yet, but if he does turn in, this draft could be an A just uh, for that alone. But I, I give this draft pick an A+. Plus. You don't know. He is a high school kid, so you don't know, but I do like what I see. Uh, zero strikes, he takes his walks, very smart, and zero, zero strikeouts. And if you look at the stats, like that intelligence, baseball acumen does translate. So I really like this pick. I think they did an excellent job with this. Luke Dickerson. He's the one I'm the most excited about. If I had to keep one of these draft picks, this is the one I'd keep. So let's go to the third round pick. And then, so let's see. I'm going to, I don't know why. All right, so Kevin Basil. And what stood out to me? Here it is, right here. Rarely swings and misses or chases the ball out of the zone. And he has experience at third base, so he can really throw. So I think he only played catcher for a year. I think this is the one. And he played third base beforehand. So I didn't see that. This is why I give it B, not an A. I didn't see that he was a, a great baseball acumen, very smart. But 
you know, some of those things uh, rarely chases out of the zone. So that's patience. Mm -hmm. That shows the intelligence. Baseball intelligence is probably there. Even though he's not a great fielder, he's only been playing a year. So he's, he may not be as polished, but I think he'll be a good player in the major league. So I do like this pick. I give it a B, uh, maybe even a B plus. Uh, so that's how I do the first grade, first round F, D, the set, uh, the revenue compensation. Second round, though, I give an A plus. And this one, I give a, a B plus. I'll give a B plus. And... Yeah, so those are my grades here. And one other thing I want to get into, everyone talks about this rebuild. And we talk about our, you know, these core guys, Wood, Cruz, House, I guess Gore, maybe even, uh, and I would say Irvin is one of them. And uh, yeah, we talk about these core guys. Uh, I guess the core, let me think. Uh, superstars. There's Kiber Ruiz. He'll be, he's he signed an extension. But one thing about it, I'm just going to use, uh, as I said, a family members who are Astros fans, uh, their rebuild, and it's one of the most successful uh, builds. It's a, it is a dynasty. They've been in the pennant almost every year. I think maybe every year, 2000. 17, they won the World Series. 2018, uh, they lost to the Red Sox in the pennant. 2019, they lost to the Washington Nationals. 2020, they were they made it. They lost to the Rays. 2021, they made it to the World Series. 2022, yeah, so they made the pennant seven straight times. So this is uh, a very good, and they're not a small market team. They They have higher payrolls. But even if you look at them, this is just first round pick history. Uh, what began this rebuild was George Springer, who was the number one pick in the draft. He left the Astros. I don't know exactly the year, maybe in 2020. I think that was uh, his last, that was his first year. So he wasn't here all this time. And you can compare just any of those so he wasn't there the whole time and then their 2012 first round pick Carlos Correa he wasn't on their 2022 uh World Series winning team either so two core guys were not on their second World Series team winning Springer and Correa so I I would say I'm gonna be the first one to say it hopefully our run next run is like this and if and they talk about Rizzo says for the next 10 years well they start their first year. They were good, I believe, it was 2016, and so it's been eight years. So, all these guys that the Nationals have—that's what I was going to say. And I'm talking about the core studs. I'll be the first one to say. Just remember, not all of them are going to be here the whole time. And I'm talking about like the Wood Crews, C.J. Abrams, Kenzie Gore. Uh, Irvin. So just be prepared for that, just uh, in my opinion. So that's one reason I like the Luke Dickerson part. There's the Seaver King, who could be a solid player. He has some work to do. He has a very low floor. But I'm glad they have someone because if they can't keep CJ, they'll need... And that's the thing. Like Carlos Correa, when he left, they have Jeremy Pena now, who's a very good shortstop. And this is what smart organizations do. Uh, when someone gets expensive, they'll let someone go, and they'll have someone almost as good or maybe just as good coming up to replace them. So anyway, that's all I have to say, just my thoughts. Uh, I'll be doing more uh, videos, maybe DC Sports Centric. Uh, Cobra Kai, I'll, I'll just go to the entertainment part. I watched Cobra Kai all the series. I didn't think season six was really all that great it was the first five it was just the lead up something you have to get through uh i'm gonna finish it but i'm very disappointed and i'll just do one other thing that 90 show don't watch it really bad show uh anyway that's all i have hit that like button subscribe if you already haven't and i will see you next video